some food, especially with the Hi, and welcome to the next installment of Idea Lab. My name is Zoe Henry, and I'm a reporter with Inc. Magazine. And I'm joined today by Josh Ostrovsky. Hi. Hi. Better known by his Instagram moniker as the Fat Jewish, uh, or the Fat Jew, or Fat Jew, depending on whatever, whatever. Whatever feels right. <laughs> whatever feels right. So you are a social media influencer. <laughs> you are also the co-founder of a wine label called White Girl Rosé, mm -hmm. and you've offered, authored a book. So. Why don't you just start by explaining to viewers who might not be terribly familiar uh, with you what it what it means to be an Instagram influencer? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm. I'm not sure I'm an influencer. Influencers, I think, in their like by nature, kind of are like promote um, and sort of like drive, pro like promote products and give visibility to like brands. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am, I guess, an influencer, except that it, all the brands, pretty much, that I, my, that I'm like, you know, driving awareness to with the platform are my own. Obviously, you know, the stuff is, you know, everything from books to wine to mm -hmm. music tours to, you know, right. uh, music festival that I throw to yoga pants to whatever. But it's not. I'm not really trying to get awareness for anyone's stuff other than pretty much my own. Right, but you have worked with a couple of other brands, right? Like Stella yeah. Artois and... Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're like, if brands are willing to sort of let me really kind of do the things that I want to do, um, like really go over the top. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm right. sure some people are willing to hold up a product and say, you should buy this. For me, it's got to be something that's like really conversation worthy mm -hmm. or something. And most brands are like not really down for that. Right. Like to really get crazy. Because honestly, there's so much noise on the internet and so much happening that in order to like create some real conversation and like get people really actually into something or make something that like is not completely disposable, um, you have to really, you know, you gotta really get pretty ridiculous with it. Can you give me some examples of a couple of brands that you've worked with where they really let you do that? Like I think there's the sitting in the bowl of chili. You never know what brands are gonna be down mm -hmm. to like do wild stuff. Like your most wild brand, um, obviously with my stuff, with like, with like a rosé and whatever, like we'll push it as far as we can. Uh, but you never know which brands are gonna really be into like creating interesting stuff that like actually is like, you know, sort of v like view worthy. Craftsman, for example, which was the um, the chili thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like a very like Americana brand. They're like very sort of you know they're for like men. It's not it's not like necessarily something that's going completely over the top. We had talked about doing something fun together, and I was like, I want you to build a giant bowl and fill it with chili and let me sit in it and have people sprinkling diced onions and cheese on me. Right. Um, as like because you know somebody wins the best Super Bowl ad on the internet, not just on TV anymore. So this was like an ad, a Super Bowl ad on the internet. How often would you, just, would you say that a brand comes to you and wants to sort of work with you and they just like aren't sort of on par with your vision and you ultimately decide this isn't going to work, I don't want to do that? Um, pretty often, only because like I know specifically what I want and I also like my ideas are completely out of the box. I'm not really of the internet. The internet is obviously like I love it like as much as I love like my biological family, but that's not like really where I came from. I kind of straddle the line age-wise between real life and the internet. So I just I just prefer doing like actual real life stuff. So it's like, it's probably easier for yeah. them, these brands to approach other people who are willing to just kind of hold up a product or shill or whatever they want to do and don't need like a giant, like bespoke chili bowl and like hundreds of pounds of chopped onion or whatever it's gonna be. Right. You know, like it's probably just easier for them to work with people like that. You have almost nine million followers mm -hmm. on Instagram now and that's up from five million, I think around this time last year. So you're continuing to grow right. um, pretty rapidly, mm -hmm. right? Um, but tell me a little bit more about how you got started. Like in the very mm -hmm. beginning when you first started posting to Instagram. I was already doing this stuff pre-Instagram. I used to do a lot of stuff with Vice and I was, I was an idiot before before there were places to share being an idiot. Which is when Instagram started, it was just about like, you know, sharing stuff like for people to look at, to kind of just like, you know, for people that I knew to just be like, this is f***ing funny. It just kind of, t it just, people connected with it. So from there it like became something that like kind of grew, but it was never really, it was never really my focus. I'm literally like, I'm driving across the country, like reviewing strip club food and writing books and throwing raves. And you know, Instagram is something that kind of happens in between in between those moments. And that's kind of how it started and I've always stayed true to that. Right. Like, what is the tell when somebody's being authentic and when someone's being not authentic? Because it's just like, you can always, like you, you, you always know, like when a social media coordinator is like running, you just hear it. There's no shill, there's no angle. Like Britney's just like, Britney Spears just on like a glass of white wine 
just like posting a, like a picture of like her two nephews like kind of off kilter right and just like how cute are they you know what i mean it's just like the imperfection of it is like what it should be it's like you know on like bradley cooper's instagram it's just like had it like had a sick day today with like three different tag names like you know like on the set of like at you know whatever his new movie you know what i mean it's just the thing about like younger people now like i guess like millennials or whatever people call them is one thing they do really well is that they can smell they can smell shill mm -hmm. Millennials know when they're being marketed to. They know when you're right. trying to talk to them and trying to backdoor them into like <clears throat> knowing about something or buying something. They can see it from like a mile away and like people make the mistake of thinking that like they're that they're like slipping through and no one notices. It's like your dad coming into your room in like a Yankee hat and being like YOLO. Like kids are like, what? <laughs> like they know that you're trying to get them to buy something. What would your advice be for a brand that's trying to be authentic and communicating with millennials? Like how can a brand actively reach them? It's a lot harder, I think, when you're posting about a product or a business than when you're posting about uh, sort of your personal life, right? Just like don't, don't try to be of the moment. Like don't, you know what I'm saying? Like do, like just be true to like what you actually do. Like if you're Fig Newton, you know, like don't post a picture and just be like Fig Newtons are swag. I don't know, like fill up a dump truck with Fig Newtons and like give 20 million Fig Newtons away. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. do stuff that like resonates it over the top and don't don't like try to like, don't like try to ride the wave. Like just do what you were gonna do. Like there's something cool about what you do. You don't need to like just right. like straight up jump on the wave. You can feel out your consumer, like with white girl, like with the rosé for example. Like sure. I'm not a wine guy. I basically wanted to give something to the people who enjoy what I do a product that I know they already liked, but actually like give it like cool packaging and like make it like feel not snobby and stupid. So like I was able to see like even me as a brand or whatever, I'm able to see what people are into. I'm you just just like look, interact, like feel it out. It's all there. Like I already knew the people who like enjoy looking at my pictures, love drinking rose. It was right there. Was there any maybe like marketing strategy or something that you sort of gleaned from interacting with your followers as you were starting to launch the the white girl rose mm -hmm. label um, that you sort of applied over time? Yeah, is that most people who came up to me in the street were drunk and like drinking rosé and we're like, oh, all this stuff. And then we were like hugging and like, you know what I mean? Like we were hugging and like screaming at each other and like sometimes we were all weeping, whether, you know what I mean? And they were like, you're drunk, like you're drinking, probably drinking rosé. There's no science to it. It's just, right. you just have to, the, the interacting was taught me everything that I need to know. Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like just because you have millions of followers on social media doesn't necessarily mean that they're customers. Like I feel like it totally. requires a little bit more, right? Totally, I mean, they're not. How how did you sort of make that transition? How did you turn fans into customers? I feel like I give them something back, you know? You buy a bottle of wine, I'm gonna like fill a jacuzzi with rosé and sit in it with a straw. I don't look at it as customers. I'm like, I'm really out there meeting people, partying with them, like hanging out with them, like really making bad decisions with them. Being around those people like makes it more of a culture. It's not just like a, it's not just like, here's the thing for sale, buy it. It's interesting, I wonder, there are some people who might not necessarily think you're that involved with the white girl wine mm -hmm. label. You're, you know, obviously a famous yeah. Instagram celebrity. They might think, oh, he's just putting his face right. on a brand, yeah. right? I wish I was less involved. I like do, I basically like head the marketing, like I'm involved with all the design, all the everything, literally every single thing. Like I'm, that is like basically at this point what I do because the thing has been popular and people are really enjoying it. I literally do everything. I wish my face was just on it. That sounds chill. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that you sort mm -hmm. of came into fi under fire last year. People, mm -hmm. you know, sort of took issue with the fact that you were taking jokes and reposting them and not always giving mm -hmm. attribution. Uh, tell me a little bit about sort of how you feel about that controversy. You decided to retroactively add credits to these posts, right? It was kind of a, a an issue on the internet that was like unresolved. You know, a lot of people felt one way and a lot of people felt the other way. I sort of got kind of placed into the middle, it was like the face of the issue. And I was, mm. I was like, you know, the internet is for yelling and screaming. You know what I mean? It's for like, that's where things get like hashed out in the most like honest like way. So it was like a bit of an argument and I, you know, kind of got sort of what I do got put into the middle of it. And I sort of waited for it to, to be hashed out. I feel like everybody kind of like got their point across. And what we sort of decided was that 
everyone was kind of gonna was gonna sort of like adhere to these rules going forward and i was totally fine with that i don't take it too personally you know what i mean like things get right. really crazy on the internet i wanted to ask you a little bit about how you deal with criticism both on the internet and also in real life mm -hmm. um to me i think there's a sort of vulnerability almost to some of what you post and what you've written about yeah um, there's this moment in your book where you're at the strip club with your father mm -hmm. um, and you're having this internal monologue where you say, oh, just, you know, a couple more, a couple more minutes, a little bit longer and then I can go home and eat cake with my mom. Right. And that to me was just a very sort of, you know, I haven't seminal changed. moment. This right. is basically, I'm doing, the, it's still the same. So how do you deal with criticism? Talk about being open and vulnerable online. That's obviously difficult for a business owner to do. It's just like part of the deal to me. It's like the internet is like, the internet is psycho. It's like psycho on the internet, but I love it. I really love it so much that like I understand that that's like part of the deal. And also people do not always mean what they're saying. A lot of people are just yelling to yell. And also people who, are, who do mean it, who aren't just like 16 year old trolls, like that's part of the deal. It's just like, that's what it is. Yeah. People say crazy stuff. There's so much stuff. Right. There's so much stuff that I'm not feeling. I don't really feel the guy from Counting Crows. Mm -hmm. I don't really like that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I might say something bad to him on the internet. So he can say something bad to me. Right. I'm like totally, I'm totally down. Like I understand, I really like, I genuinely love the internet so much that I right. know it's like part of the deal and I don't take it like too personally. Right, but you know that there are potential fans or for you know a company, customers that you're alienating mm -hmm. by you know publicly criticizing somebody or coming down on a particular issue. Um, I, with politics, for example, like would you advise a business owner to come out and endorse Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? The only issue I really care about is sweet shit. I'm just like a fat, funny guy who does ridiculous stuff. Like I'm not the guy. Like, you should go elsewhere to like find where the brow is a bit higher. And I don't feel bad about that. Although in this particular climate, I would say that like if you were to vote for Donald Trump, like you're like a f***ing monster from like outer space hell, and like you're you're basically like a mongoloid and an idiot. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not like I don't really use my voice. Like I use my voice for like what it's meant for, which is to like inspire a good time and like help make memories. But like some things you, you know. Right, that's, right, but you're also aware that you're potentially alienating people. That's literally completely fine. I'm a person, like yeah. I think stuff. I think certain shit is horrendous. I think certain stuff is horrendous. And like, I'm gonna say it, I don't really care. If you're ever gonna vote for Donald Trump, you shouldn't even drink white girl wine. Honestly, I don't mm -hmm. care. I really don't care and I'm fine with saying that. Last question, I wanted to ask why you have parodied uh, <laughs> the Steve Jobs, Walter Isaacson <laughs> cover. But I feel like people would expect my cover to be like, me like jumping out of a hamburger. And I just kind of thought that this was sort of like grabbing. It, it, it just seemed unexpected, you know? I like to be off the nose, you know? Like my whole thing is like I like to, I like to do things people don't like, or be places people don't think I'm gonna be. I got a deal for plus size modeling. I want you to be like, why does he make rosé? Why is he a plus size model? Like none of this makes any sense. I'm there, I wanna like keep people on my toes and keep right. people talking. Like if you would expect me to be there, I'm not gonna be there. The world is ending. Like the polar ice caps are melting and like it's all over. So like I'm basically just trying to like keep, I'm trying to keep people on their toes. Who knows what's next? I don't know. I could put out a line of oven mitts. Well, thank you so much. I've had a great time. I had a wonderful time. It's good to be together.